Hello, I'm your host Atu Jamir and welcome to our talk show on Filter. Before we start off with the talk show, let's have a sh look at a short video on what this talk show will be about. Urban mobility has been one of the most important and challenging issues in our times. It is a catch-all term which means we are discussing the ease and speed with which people, goods and services can move about in urban areas. It is currently estimated that the percentage of people living in urban areas have increased from 64% to 83% since 1950. With the increase in population in cities and growing congestion, there are challenges for transportation systems that will impact how we design and build our urban locations. Urban mobility includes all aspects of movement in urban settings. It can include modes of transport such as walking, cycling and public transit as well as the spatial arrangements of these modes in a built environment. It is a critical factor underlying global sustainability and has a great effect on the quality of life in cities. The ease with which people can go about their lives without having to use motorized vehicles is an important feature for many cities. Future mobility trends are not just about electric cars or self-driving cars. There are many other aspects to the future of transportation. However, there are several challenges when it comes to executing urban mobility plans in the city. As mentioned in the video, today we'll be talking about urban mobility in general, modes, trends and capacity that are best fit for cities and to talk about it, we'll be joined by three special guests virtually. We have Kezo Chole Retso, who is currently the General Manager of Planning for Kohima Smart City. We also have Rokovono, who is currently working as the Assistant Manager, Transport Planner for Kohima Smart City. And we'll also be joined by Yanfo Kikon, who is a Senior Technology Consultant, NISG from Ministry Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, who has about 11 years of experience in the software and IT industry. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Okay. Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, you know, uh, starting with this conversation uh, today, could you guys tell us something about the importance of efficient public transportation system for our cities and towns since today as the topic is we're going to talk about uh, urban mobility as a whole. Okay. Yeah. So when you talk about efficiency, and pub in public transportation. Me as a public or citizen, I want to transfer, I want to travel from say point A to B. Right. Say it is 10 kilometers. Right now I'm spending say 100 rupees in a taxi and it takes me one hour. If you want to bring in efficiency, I should be instead spending 50 rupees and it should take me 30 minutes instead of one hour. Right? This is improved in quality. So this is what basically efficiency in transportation is and where we should be headed to this. Right, ma'am Atra and uh, ma'am Rukovano, would you like to add up anything to that as well then? Yes, of course. Efficiency would also include uh, sustainability right. of the transportation system. So when we talk about sustainability, it is to do with the affordability as well as how we are preserving our environment while we are using all these transportation systems. All these come into efficiency of transportation systems. So moving forward, uh, when you know, in simple language, what is sustainable urban mobility plan, and why does it apply to only largely planned districts like those in Nagaland? Uh, so, if we talk about mobility in transport, it, it uh, refers to those more use pollution, emission, uh, such as walk or public transport. So. We uh, refer if we if we look into the urban context, it will measure those areas which are planned and where the transportation uh, plans is applicable. All right. So, uh, you know, how can uh, 
uh, we'd want to know how can authorities in Nagaland engage in uh, sustainable urban mobility planning that also encourages a uh, sustainable transport mode since you know uh, urbanization as said we also need to be uh, worried about sustainability here so could you also uh, guys also put some inputs there okay you see now um, any authority be it an at the national level the state level the district level or city or even at the village level they can plan the sustainable transport plan for their own local area of the state or the region so there are also several transportation planning firms in india some are affiliated with the union ministry as well and you can engage those services the person of those plans and also we have we are privileged enough to have uh, trained and professional transport planners urban planners in our state as well so those services can be obtained in order to make such kinds of plans any means of transportation that is green and has impact on the environment it is sustainable plan so um, Authorities can plan the uses in such a way that all the activities that get achieved, you go through whatever distances, you put accordingly in a neighborhood. That's how we plan the cities at the level, and accordingly, that way our transportation is improved through land use planning. Mr. Yanfo and uh, Mem Rukovunu, do you guys also want to add up more to that, or? We can proceed to the next question. Okay. So, uh, does the trends of urban transport or the benefit generally on the the higher middle class, considering that majority of Nagaland is uh, tribal, lower, or middle class? Then? Yeah, so the services of Nagaland State Transportation, as we are all aware, people still use NST bus, right, to go to our village, besides some of the private Tatakumos. And so this kind of public transportation, which are already available, is being availed by even the we financially weaker sections of the society. Uh, most, so many buses and rickshaws we have in, for example, those are availed by the financially weaker sections of the society. But like you rightly mentioned, a higher middle class, almost everybody buys a car, right? So instead of availing public transportation. Yeah, so that you have rightly pointed out. Also, um, we would want to know, you know, what are the existing problems in uh, public transportation in Nagaland? I mean, I'm pretty sure there might be many. So if you could point out some, then that would be great. Uh, so first of all, the in Nagaland, we don't have any organized public transport system except for the Nagaland State Transport. And then uh, the public authorities provide efficient public transport so that the government can also regulate properly. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Okay, so moving forward, you know, uh, how can these issues be also improved and solved then? Uh, so the public authorities should to provide more efficient public transport to the uh, so that the government can take really to that, and then we should uh, streamline that this public transport into a more organized uh, system so that the management of it and the efficiency of it can also improve the efficiency. Yeah, so adding to Okokono, right now the transportation system is informal. Huh? Right, right. We need to formalize it. So there needs proper regulation by the government authorities. So there needs to be a formalization of the informal public transportation in Nagaland. Also, you know, uh, since uh, you guys are working for the smart city here, so we'd want to know what are the parameters that the smart city has for infrastructure that will come within the ambit of ease of access in regard to uh, transportation. So uh, when we talk about the 
smart cities. We as a smart city as a company, we do not have infrastructure as a scope within the smart city issues. What we do have though is that we have this common control system. From the common control system, the urban mobility monitoring and HMAP is the scope of smart city. So towards the east and the accessibility of it is that but smart city is working on its online provisions. So our as far as traffic transportation is concerned, our IEEC is in place and also all those traffic lights, automatic traffic control system is in place. So uh, we do not as as smart city have hope to the infrastructures as much. Yes. Uh, talking about the automated uh, traffic lights, I think we have spoken to Yanfo earlier also. I think the general spoke to Yanfo earlier regarding that also. So, uh, could you tell us, you know, more about? We'd like here. We'd want to know more about how successful do you think that would be, or how was the pilot test? I mean, to make our viewers more aware. Yeah, the pilot test was fairly successful. Okay. Uh, we were also, like I said, very skeptical and then pessimistic. But surprisingly, when the pilot testing was conducted, uh, it was successful in, in, in ways of people, you know, themselves stopping when they see the red light example and waiting for the green light to switch on so they can go. So in that sense, our people, their awareness level, it has really improved. And I think more testing should be done Rokovono and team, they have come up with a report. So based on the report, the recommendations will be sent to the respective departments, like say, PWD, traffic police, and everybody, so they can work collectively to maybe even redesign some of the junctions and introduce some new innovative ways to improve the traffic congestion. So, uh, like you've mentioned, when is the... So it looks promising. Okay, so uh, we want to know uh, when is the next uh, test due then? So the traffic lights are on every day from 11 to 3 p.m. All right. And so it, the traffic police, they are trying to educate their personnel to use the lights. And also we will be conducting more tests hopefully next week after the approval of authorities. Also talking about traffic and I think uh, traffic is one of the major issues here when it comes to Nagaland and places like Kohima or Dimapur where spaces are small. So, uh, you know, the Dimapur police have also come up with this idea to control, you know, uh, parking when it comes to parking. They've introduced these boards where uh, in places there should be parallel parking. So, do you think when it comes to traffic, controlling traffic and also solving the, you know, parking issues, do you think parallel parking would be a good idea? Uh, so when we observe the situations of Nagaland or Oshima, Timapur, the major issue can also be on street parking. So on uh, parking, parallel parking is one of the strategy of how a people park. So that can also uh, re widen the carriageway in a way. So uh, to some extent, it can improve the flow without sort of obstruction, like the other parking layouts. So now moving forward, we'd want to know, you know, in what ways could we uh, solve the urban mobility problems of our state, especially in places like uh, Dimapur and Kohima? Uh, so first of all, um, as of the existing situation, there's no comprehensive mobility plan. So the first step to move forward would be preparing one uh, such type of document where comprehensive mobility for the city uh, it's there so that we can have a reference to move forward with whatever plan we want to bring up. Mm. So you know with urbanization also comes the our problem of uh, sustaining things and to work towards sustaining things. So, how can Nagaland also support and promote uh, sustainable transport modes while still trying to, you know, still integrating balanced development practices in both environment friendly but it's also safe and accessible, usable and uh, practical? 
Uh, whenever there's a plan development, there is a compromise on the environment, right? Right. So you are, you are rightly saying, how do we bring about a plan? So when you talk about sustainability, the first thing that comes to our mind is how do we reduce pollution? So we have to keep those in mind while uh, improving the efficiency of the public transport. So this balance has to be made at a very macro level. At, when we go down to the finer details, like Madam, maybe she can explain uh, further. All right. Uh, uh, sustainability. Yeah. Sustainable. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever we talk about sustainability, so I have earlier stated when there is a topic on sustainability, right. we include safety as well, accessibility as well, visibility as well, and practicality. How the plan goes about it? A planner would study the situation of the area which they are to and accordingly, the socio-economic condition of the area would be assessed. Also, the services available, the infrastructure, and also the probability threat of that particular area. So, accordingly, how to improve that particular area in matter of transportation, improvement of uh, the static management, or be it the urban planning as a whole. So, this type of mobility plan. Today, since we are discussing about mobility plan, mm -hmm. focus more on the footpaths, footsteps, and NMT, non-motorized transportation. So all those are in line with sustainable thing which we are discussing. And we talk about cycling. So it's, it's this, guy, this type of you know, plan involves low carbon mobility plan and would suggest for green buffering of your roads at wheels so that the plants would absorb the dust particles yeah. and that way your core mobility plant is sustainable. Also, ma'am, you mentioned about uh, non-motorized transportation. So, you know, since we are not uh, quite familiar with all these terms, uh, in short, could you gi give an example of uh, that? So, non-motorized transportation, you know, first thing is the age of walking. All right. So, we do not use automobiles to move ourselves through walking. Right. And the next level would be cycling. So, those are the non-motorized transportation systems. All right. All right. I think we still have a lot to learn from three of you, and also our viewers will be more than happy to learn. But uh, before that, I think we'll have a, we'll take a short break. We'll come back after a short break. Sugan, Rang, or Asli Chaas. Every day Zumba pe apna swad. Every day spices, 100% taste. Every day spices, best. Amikang sop, amikang lala kordo, saba raki ule monjai. Itu nishna amikang kile amikang lala surroundings kang saba narake. Ek bar bhabi sabi amikang kile amikang lala surroundings do saba raki ule effort na de. Aro manu ala kang bara letra kuradam de kile narukai. Amikan hotai DMC can be responsible day. Hosa ase tai kan lala das ase amikan lala city clean rakhi bule. Holibi amikan lala social responsibility doku di ase. Dimapur municipal council kan bara kwado. Tai kan bi Dimapur sabha kure bule vigorously kam kure ase. Holibi tai kan lala site bi shortfall ho jai. Especially market places area kan de. As a citizen amikan lala duty bi ase amikan lala city do sabha rakhi bule. Under the banner of a better Dimapur project, DMC Canberra like-minded groups are institutions such as Team Clean, Dim Green, Living for Environment, Life NGO, Healthy Dimapur, our Act of Kindness, our Dismantling Team Kan Logote, Partner Kurikina, Kam Kuriasi, Dimapur Sabara Kibule. Sapa Kuria Laga Aro Alag Alek activities can be bishi alagina kam kuria here se taikan laga modul para. Aro public spaces can be Mental dust pin be installed kuri deke na ase, aro trees can be blend kuri na ase, dividers kande, dimapur CD do sundur aro green tikhe pole. 
Kin do Taikan in Kapal Kamkurilibi, public handbara, individual responsibility in maintaining public hygiene or cleanliness to Idabi Pishi Comti as a Manukan, happy jaded Hushi, letter to Taikan Laga Kushi Jagade Picabule. Dimapur, the one of the fastest growing cities as a Northeast, Idunishna garbage volume to Hotai in increase Hujayasi, Aro Idunimide, TMC Kambi, public laga corporation, Natagado, Taikan Kani Pishi Dukase. Swatch Survection 2020 Cleanliness Survey de Nagaland do rank 9 de takshe aro itu bitore Dimapur aro Kohima do sob se dirtiest city laga category de takshe Out of 382 cities Dimapur do rank 375 de takshe Welcome back. Now again, moving forward to the discussion and uh, continuing. We were earlier discussing about you know, non-mobility, transport, and uh, all those kind of things. So yeah, now moving forward, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I would like to ask, you know, sustainable urban mobility plans also solves the uh, urban transport problem. So what benefits will it give to a population that is economically weak and depends on expensive and unregulated public transport systems? Uh, so, as ma'am has said earlier, sustainable urban mobility refers to those modes such as walk or cycling. So, if we go into that, of, uh, walk and cycling are uh, modes which are very cheap. So, yeah, that can, of course, benefit the poor and economically weak sections also. Right, there seems to be some uh, issues with our audio, but yeah, let's just try to, uh, you know, get on with it. Yeah. So, uh, I, okay, moving for further, I want to know, you know, is Nagaland ready for? Since you know, we think that when we talk about sustainability or when we talk about less lessening pollution, when it comes to transportation, only about electric cars. So, is Nagaland ready for electric-based transport, or will it be only for you know only a modern development that only those in the higher economic status can enjoy? Yeah, Atu, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in India, the adoption of electric vehicles is actually ulta, huh? because the rich in in wealthy countries, the rich people are buying Teslas, and the rich people are the first people who are adopting electric. But in India, it's the opposite, because it is normally the rickshaw drivers who are first adopting electric, and not the rich people. If you go to, for example, towns like near my village, Merapani, or some town in Assam, you see majority of the auto rickshaws are now, they're using electric. So even in Dimapur, I think we should encourage and spread awareness for people to start adopting electric rickshaws. But I think uh, we are, although Dimapur especially is one of the fast growing city in, in India, it is yet, to, we are yet to see electric Charles, right? We are yet to see electric buses. I think we should move towards that. Arukunra first electric vehicle adopt Ray, they are going to be the front runners and they are going to control the future economy. Okay. So it's very important for people to adopt electric. For example, I give you it petrol in And even because of the Russian Ukraine war, you never know in the future again petrol price may again cross hundred rupees also. So if you talk about an electric, uh, so, sorry, a petrol uh, rickshaw in Dimapur, it is an 8 liter engine. So, 8 liter is the Dimapur petrol price 96 rupees. 96 rupees there, in, in, for one kilometer, you can, you have to spend 3 rupees. But for electric rickshaw, one kilometer you can go with almost 30 paisa, for example. So there's a huge difference. So dropouts can there's so many unemployed youths in Nagaland. They can take up this, ride these electric rickshaws even within the colonies. They can become self-employed. 
if a rickshaw driver is earning 15,000 rupees per day, petrol rickshaw chalai na, 15,000 kama as gulay do. Electric rickshaw chalai ji gulay do, they can start earning 25 to 30,000 rupees. Aru public car ne fair bhi aru sosta ho jo. So, aru pollution bhi komdi, aru noise pollution bhi nai. So, it's benefit everybody. So, it is not for very westernized, rich, advanced countries. But I think Nagaland, it is high time starting from the weakest section of the society, the unemployed youths should start adopting electric rickshaws to start with. Any, you know, a report Krigna had on them want any Paisheki with uh, electric carriage or Manu on the Mandu Bishina Tagi Nagaland, they wanted to Daniel Paisharo, a uh, charge Krabi, Dimapure, Ekta Pointe, Tagaseto. Could we say that you do want any awareness Natagagane, Sina, Ki Kane Huboido? Like Mohan, Alak Manuan India, they are already moving forward to electric cars, but Mohan Vitevi, Ektai Tagenule, Manuaniman Najanina with Tageto. Is it the lack of awareness or is it something else? What, uh, what would we say to that? There is going to be demand. Right, right. When there is demand, there is going to be supply of uh, charging points. So maybe ekta duita colony where they can the visionaries can start using electric uh, and then everybody in Nagaland ekjo manuwar start plus of manu follow grena. So somebody has to be the trendsetter in uh, bringing electric uh, rickshaws. Right. Also, uh, ma'am and Miss um, Rukovinu. Would you like to add up more to that or are we okay? I think we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, uh, before, you know, moving on to the next question here, I, I would want our viewers, we would want our viewers to know that this program is uh, sponsored by the Directorate of Municipal Affairs, Kohima. So, yeah. And, yeah, now let's move forward. Uh, my next question would be, you know, why is comprehensive mobility plan important? We'd want to know. And also, are these, uh, are there plans only for a particular city or is it possible to plan for the entire state as a whole or for a few uh, districts together? Uh, so, a comprehensive plan, uh, it's, it's usually refers to a plan which will have a short-term measures, long-term measures regarding the existing transport system in the city. So, usually a comprehensive plan will focus on the city, which will try to bring up the existing situation, problems, and what can be done regarding that. So, it will be a, a key plan. Uh, a kind of a vision document to write the future uh, proposals, future model plans, or anything. Uh, how to organize the existing problems, how to solve the existing issues and problems, so that we can have uh, that the problems be uh, solved in a more better way. So that is a comprehensive mobility. And then uh, we can also say that comprehensive mobility plan does not only confine to a particular city, it can also be a combination of one to six also. That will be based on the population or the area. Right. Also, you know, as per your observation, is our state public transportation systems benefiting the weaker sections of our society? Like as you mentioned, you know, uh, we have we can see cars in every you know every household has about five six cars now i mean that's not an exaggeration but i think that's true also so when it come, when we talk about public transportation or i think only mostly us you know the middle class people are you know we use it so do you think it's benefiting the weaker sections of our society these days okay you see when there is no plan developed so when when development is happening haphazardly, then we see this situation in a growing, you know, urban and the cities. Now, if it is planned, then all this problem would be, you know, addressed. Because as we have stated earlier, when we make plan, the plan would study socio-economic conditions. Right. So, accordingly, the weaker section of our society is the first priority in this matter. Because when we plan, we plan an inclusive planning. You know? And when we talk about transportation, we talk about public transportation, which would be the most 
cheapest and the efficient for the majority public of the society of the city. So that would be the best concern. So that way, the uh, section of the society meets the requirement is addressed. However, now as I stated earlier, because we do not have such kind of land transportation in system, we do not even have public security control over our transport systems. You see rickshaws, our uh, uh, taxis, the buses, who are running those? And those, uh, you know, administration or detachment, all are by private authorities, private individuals. That's why the public is suffering. And that is why the weaker section of society seems to be neglected in this area. All right. I think also, yeah, at this juncture, uh, juncture, yeah, is it uh, possible to introduce electric vehicles for mass transportation in the state? Then I think, uh, Yan, for you, would want to answer the that. Yeah, why not? Because it's going to reduce the burden of the common man. Because the price is going to reduce, the ticket fare is going to reduce. At the same time, the running cost is also going to reduce because electricity is much cheaper. Okay compared to petrol and diesel, where the price is just shooting up every day. So it makes sense. Now what is required is a collaboration between industry and government to work together. Right. Industry and government to work together to make this a reality. Right. Also, you know, uh, we would want to know, since we're now talking about uh, public transportation here, uh, are Nagas making use of the available mass transportations or public transportations like you know people are making use of it in the other, other cities? See, our only available means of mass transportation is the bus transportation only. So when we look at the mid level, now people are utilizing it to the maximum. We could see that our NSP is always packed with, you know, if on top of the buses, at the, on the roofs of the buses as well. So I should say that we are utilizing it to the also, ma'am, uh, when we are, were having conversations earlier, I think uh, you did mention about how uh, when we uh, th uh, think about public transportation, we have this mentality that it's only for, you know, or you feel inferior or something like that. So uh, do you want to share something about that with us, ma'am? Okay. Mm -hmm. no, this is something. No, it's okay. You see, normally our the mindset of the citizens and especially our Naga people, maybe because of the services, uh, the efficiency of those public buses service provisions, we tend to think that those are for the inferior people. Or we do not. Uh, however, as for me, I take the bus services as frequent as uh, I could in order to study and also in order to see the experience of it. Though I have a government vehicle with me, that I do it on a weekly basis. So um, nowadays we see that lots of young people utilizing the bus services, and I think that is no more of such kind of mental attitude anymore as it was before, because things are so changing. So, Ma'am uh, Rokovo do you want to add up anything to that, like or personal experiences or things like that, or things that you've learned? Uh, do you want to add up anything to that as well? Uh, yes, of course, because daily I, I travel from public transport here, uh, which is the city buses. So, I see that lots of people are using it. And then uh, we cannot say that like people are not using it, they no, but people are using it because as we see, it's much more cheaper than the other modes. And then, uh, in a way, it's faster to uh, compute also with the traffic conditions and everything. So, yeah. You know, considering that places like Kohima have space uh, constraints, and what are the challenges in ensuring accessible and convenient and economic use of uh, available space to introduce uh, new mobility concepts? 
You see, I'm talking too much, but first of all, I would like to say that there is no more available space within the Municipal Council for any other additional development of provisions. Um, as far as uh, this transportation sustainability is concerned, from the smart city, we are trying to encourage the age of working you know, means of transportation for healthy. So are there any measurable works and progress in regard to how existing infrastructure can be optimized to implement changes in regard to public transport modes then? or for some cities uh, in particular. Right, right. Yeah, hello? Yeah, this question is regarding the entire state or just some cities in particular? Yes, it's the entire state. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, for the entire state, uh, I think the right stakeholder would be the concerned department. Right. Who are building the infrastructure? Who are implementing the projects for building roads and infrastructure for the entire state? Because there are multiple parties like National Highways, uh, PWD, right? So, and uh, after they are implementing the projects, because even National Highways is under the central government, and they will have their MIS systems which measure the progress of the projects. Right. Right. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, um, I we would want to know, no, will, will the idea of accessible transport services for common citizens include uh, reduction regulations like such as ought and even traffic systems so that they can avail public transport and space congestions in urban areas? Uh, universally, it has been proven that when an efficient public transport is introduced in a city, the use of public cars will automatically reduce. So, however, the option of people using cars will depend on the affordability of an individual. We seem to be having issues with the network also. So, yeah, I think we'll uh, take a short break and uh, fix the network and come back. Yeah, we'll take a short break. Sugan, Rang, or Asli Chaas. Every day, Zumba pe apna swad. Every day spices, 100% taste. Every day spices, best. Amikan sop, amikan la cordo, sabara kiu le monjai. Itu nishna amikan kile amikan la surroundings kan sabana rakhe. Ek bar bhavi sabi amikan kile amikan la surroundings do sabara kiu le effort na de. Aro manu ala kan bara letra kuradam de kile narukai. Amikan hotai DMC kan ge responsible de. Hosa ase tai kan lara das ase amikan lara city clean rakhi bole. Holi bi amikan lara social responsibility do khudi ase. Dimapur municipal council kan bara kwado. Tai kan bi Dimapur sabha kore bole vigorously kam kore ase. Holi bi tai kan lara site de bi shortfall ho jai. Especially market placed area kan de. As a citizen amikan lara dui di bi ase amikan lara city do sabha rakhi bole. Under the banner of a better Dimapur project, DMC Canberra like-minded groups are institutions such as Team Clean, Dim Green, Living for Environment, Life NGO, Healthy Dimapur, our act of kindness, our dismantling.
Welcome back. Now again, moving uh, further and continuing with this conversation here. Uh, you know, it is being uh, taught that in the future, the cars will still play a major role, but it will no longer be as important as it is today. So, uh, yeah, what does it mean? And that, does it mean that the future of sustainability begins with mobility then? Uh, yes, indeed, because transportation, you know, when we look at the data of India, transportation alone in the transportation sector, it is account to 70% of carbon emissions to our environment. So when this mobility, sustainable mobility is properly planned, then there is the future of the city. Otherwise, we destroy our own cities. You know, when we talk sustainability in simple word, it is utilizing the resources that is available in your city to your requirement only and not exploiting what you have okay for future sustenance city. So when we talk about sustainable you know, mobility is indeed the future of the city. And also now with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, planning, urban planning as such is going to be a paradigm shift towards, you know, planning for the health of the people rather than planning spaces to park your car or to move your car. So urban planning is moving towards that way and now encouraging more neighborhood land use integrated plan, mixed land use plan in the neighborhood where each and every citizen is, you know, provisions, you know, the services are made available that you go to your work, you do your business, within distances. So cities are now directed to plan that way with this COVID-19 pandemic so that through walking your immunity is improved, uh, citizens' health is improved, and so mobility is addressed in that way. And to add to Madam, I'll add a very interesting point. We're having this online uh, discussion, online, online meeting. Right. That means we did not take our car to travel to your uh, studio. Right. So in the future, when most of the offices works and everything can be go online with e-governance, with this Digital India program, people will not have to travel from one place to another often, right? right sure. That way the congestion will also reduce. <laughs> that means uh, we will only need to travel if we want, as a tourist or for fun. And most of the office work can be done online. That is also one solution to reduce uh, traffic congestions. Right. But we could also say that that would make people again more lazy or something like that, right? So yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, you know, let's uh, shift from. You know, let's shift to some other topic here now. Let's talk about shared mobility here. So uh, the idea of shared mobility in urban setting uh, continues to be encouraged, especially in developing countries. You know, what is a shared mobility especially? Could you uh, give us more details on that? Uh, so shared mobility would meet uh, any, every, any mode or any type of vehicle where a group of people share one particular vehicle. Say, uh, we can say taxi. So taxi or buses. Right. So there is, uh, in, sh in a very short, simple term, it is vehicle, one vehicle used by multiple people, so that becomes a shared mobility. Example like the buses, the taxis, or when we car together to offices, to any uh, outing, that's an example, basic examples of shared mobility. Right. So, you know, uh, with uh, people's uh, greater awareness about the damage of greenhouse gas emission have on uh, the environment. How can uh, future urban planning in regard to mobility services inco incorporate uh, practices that are environmental friendly? Uh, first of all, first of all, any plan, plan is for long term. So therefore, it is for the future. So if we wait for the future to plan for the future by planning, it will be too late. So what we wanted to have in future, we plan today. Right. And the next one. Right, yeah. 
Thank you, ma'am. I think yeah, we'll just move to the next question now here. So, uh, how you know we'd want to know how far will mobility uh, concepts impact the lives of citizens with disabilities, considering that any urban setting requires consideration of their needs too. So, uh, see the cities uh, when they plant any mobility infrastructure such as bus stops or train station, metros, train. Usually, see that they provide a provision where this rent or where they sell textile tiles for uh, for people with disability. So, there are various. Um, strategies to implement uh, so that we can also encourage stability and integrate them with uh, um, uh, transport infrastructure. And also, you know, uh, we'd want to know how, let's talk about traffic now here, we'd want to know how safe are the existing traffic management systems in Nagaland that are, you know, and that they may require structural, I mean, will they require any structural changes? Oh, I mean, like, as per information that we have, right. apparently Nagaland is the second lowest, uh, has the lowest uh, rate of traffic accidents, second lowest in the country, right? So this is uh, as per the National Crime Records Bureau on traffic accidents. Okay. So the data shows that Nagaland is, in terms of in, in numbers, in quantity, Nagaland is less, the rate is less. And I'm sure there'll be a huge variance from area to area. Example, Chumura, Luigina, Purana, Bazardo, we often see like there's lots of accidents, right? Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of streamlining that needs to be done, a uh, lot of awareness and also change of mindset, especially in overtaking and using those ethics and uh, changing the lanes. It, even the government has taken some efforts in even engaging people like Dreams Unlimited to raise such awareness. Right. But I think it'll take some more time for us to get adjusted to it. So there are different types of accidents, like even drunk driving, for example. Uh, there are so many different reasons why uh, ex accidents. So as per the data, is second second lowest. But I think we, ha we still have a lot of work to do to reduce and minimize accidents and take right. safe safety measures. So, you know, uh, Nagas have aversion to uh, public modes of transport due to perceived poor services or unprofessional drivers and, of of course, exorbitant uh, and unmonitored fares for their use also. So, how can this be changed? Could you also, you know, give your suggestions or inputs on that as well? Uh, you see, as we have discussed it, right. as a public body, when we talk public transport, we talk of those buses services managed by the public yes, and not by an individual. Okay? So looking into that way, we see that when the NST authority appoints a driver, they normally appoint someone who is a fashion driver and also um, someone who is able to drive that, you know, public transportation. The etiquette of a person, you know, that is a very tricky thing that varies from individual to individual. That is. So, um, when we talk about the etiquette of certain drivers, then that is up to the department to see how they address such kind of yeah. issues. Yes. One solution to that is if we look at Delhi. Many years ago, we have experienced in Delhi, Hotel Authority, Driver, Taxi Driver, Hotel Jakarta, Guri, Yes. Because they are so rude and they charge so much and we have to bargain. Right. Now that has completely changed. How? With introduction of services like Uber and Ola, yeah, exactly. customers they rate the taxi drivers five star, four star, right? So such kind of rating system has indirectly changed the conscious, the etiquettes, the manners, and also the behavior of the drivers. The rating system in the Ola and Uber. So those kind of systems we need to study and also introduce in Nagaland. Maybe Ola and Uber may not come, but government can also introduce such kind of apps, maybe. All right. Also, yeah, uh, coming to the end parts of this conversation that we're having now here. Uh, you know, like you have been talking about the rate of fares in public transport in Nagaland are very high, you know. So we'll, we would want to know if, 
you know, only will structural changes alone help in encouraging people to use common public transports then? I think the NST buses fares are quite reasonable. We cannot say it is exorbitant comparing to other, you know, services so run by the third parties. Right. But of course, there is room for improvement. First of all, the uh, as we have discussed earlier, the asset itself, upgrading the asset, the buses, and also look into the management system of the drivers and not only in the Nagaland, you know, state transport NST buses, but if there is also like public authority run buses, then the authorities improvement in management of those uh, public assets would, you know, encourage encourage our citizens to utilize those buses. Because if we give the service which is safe and also affordable and also efficient, then way everybody will be willing to use such kind of services in All right. Also, you're coming uh, coming to an end of this conversation. Whatever we're talking about, you know, be it transportation or be it, I mean, modes or anything. At the end of the day, it's just for the citizens now here. So we'd want to know, you know how can uh, common citizens adapt to changing transportation paradigms without actually hurting uh, their pockets? Yeah, for me, it's the answer I have already given you. Yes. Go electric. It is not a matter of if we are we can adopt or not it is a matter of when to adopt so people who adopt early will definitely benefit so and somebody has to start using it especially the electric rickshaws i'm telling you the trend is just going to take over so for me it's go electric <laughs> I just hope that our viewers would take that idea and would see uh, electric rickshaws everywhere now. So yeah, uh, coming to yeah. it, yeah. Lastly, I want to, you know, uh, this is a very important question that I want to, we want to you know. Say, uh, what suggestions do you guys give to our people to improve mobility in a sustainable way? I mean, yeah, you already mentioned electric cars uh, again and again, but yeah, if there's anything else, then yeah, we'd like to know. Yes, we would suggest for walking and cycling for the most, you know, sustainable mode of transportation. So as far as possible, if it is a walking distance, it's nothing like walking. All right. And cycling, that is. <laughs> All right, I think thank you. So, uh, that's all we'll have for today's discussion. Thank you so much, all three of you, for joining me today. I mean, I understand that you guys have a very busy schedule, but thank you so much for taking out time and joining us today. And I'm pretty hopeful that now our viewers are much aware about you know how what sustainable uh, mobility is, and also about you know you guys have explained about what. What are the best modes and trends that uh, we can are are you know best modes and trends for our citizens here in Nagaland. So thank you so much once again for joining me. Sugan, Rang, or Asli Chaas. Every day Zumba pe apna swad. Every day spices, 100% taste. Every day spices, best. Amikan sop, amikan la kordo, sabara ki ule mon jai. Idu nishna amikan kile amikan la sarandins kan sabana rake. Ek bar bhavi sabi amikan kile amikan la sarandins do sabara ki ule effort na de. Aro manu ala kan bara letra kuradam de kile narukai. Amikan Hotai DMC can be responsible day. Hosa se tai kan la das a se amikan la city clean rakibule. Holibi, amikan la social responsibility to kudia se. Dimapur municipal council kan bara kwado. Tai kan bi Dimapur sabha kuribule vigorously kam kure se. Holibi tai kan la side de bi short fall ho jai. Specially market places area kan de. As a citizen amikan la do di bi a se amikan la city to sabha rakibule. Under the banner of a better Dimapur project, DMC Kanbara like-minded groups are institution 